Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChartsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, February 17, 2017. Uh, this week all major indices uh, hit all-time highs. Um, also, uh, participation in the stock market rally is broad. Uh, however, the defensive sectors are trying to catch up to the rest of the market. Uh, junk bonds again hit all-time high and, and I think this is a good for the stocks as well. Bonds seem to have hit the wall of support and are really not dropping much lower. Uh, we'll see if this means a pause for stock rally. Uh, we'll look at Forex Universe, we will look at um, uh, Euro versus US Dollar, British Pound, US Dollar versus Japanese Yen and Canadian Dollar. Gold again consolidated for the second week in a, wrong, in a row, uh, but it is at, now at strong resistance. Uh, we'll also look at a bullish and a bearish case for GDX, the gold miners. And then we'll finish off with energy ETF as it's retesting the uh, breakout. We'll look at oil and natural gas. All right. Uh, let's start with S&P 500, ETF SPY, this is a total return index, in other words the dividends are added back into the price. Uh, pretty straightforward, these are all time highs, this is a bullish chart. Um, just visually this chart is getting a little bit overextended, I guess you could say that we had a surge, consolidation, another surge, so depending on how you measure this initial surge, I think we're kind of getting to the point of where this surge is equal to this surge. So uh, most likely we will soon see some sort of a pause. Again, I don't know what pause it will, what it will look like. Maybe it will just be something similar to this. Maybe we will correct through time, like sideways, and maybe we will correct through price. Maybe we will drop actually some. But again, generally speaking, this is a very bullish chart. It is being confirmed by advanced decline lines. These are all-time highs in advanced decline lines. Um, a little bit longer term uh, chart of S&P 500. Uh, here, what I wanted to point out, this is RSI. And we're definitely overbought. Um, you know, we had a strong move, so we're definitely in overbought territory. However, you can see here we had an overbought condition. Um, right there basically and it didn't really result in much and like I said this was more of a correction through time just kind of traded sideways and then we just went to new highs paused and then brand new uh, all-time highs down below here I have several of the market breadth indicators the longer term ones are percentage of stocks above the 200 day exponential moving average and the bullish percent index. I see no major divergences here. Um, just Friday we have a reading of 76.6 here for bullish percent index. Back here we have this reading of 76.8, so I can't even call it a divergence. So there was a little bit of a divergence, like, like we had the 74 here, and we had a higher high versus this high. But right now, I don't see a, any divergences here. So what I do see here is I see confirmation of all-time highs and a broad participation in a rally. Here is a Dow Jones Industrial Average. Similar picture here. This was even stronger surge, sideways consolidation. And maybe we'll get, maybe we'll go higher here because, like, looks like this is a big leg up here, and this leg up here is not yet, you know, equivalent to this leg. Usually, what happens is you have a breakout consolidation and the equal or higher breakout to the previous one. Down below here, we see advanced decline line and advanced decline volume line, and they're both confirming all time highs. So I don't see any divergences here for uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average either. Here's QQQ, NASDAQ 100 ETF. Monster move here, very strong. Look at this, all white candles, hollow candles. We're getting a little overextended, but you know, to get to this levels are takes a lot of buying pressure. 
Um, again, we are seeing confirmation from the advanced decline lines and in other words, the participation in this rally is broad, not just a few stocks are making uh, all-time highs. Here's a um, QQQ, and here I want to point out that we had a overbought reading of RSI, um, like right there. This was basically the correction, which is inexistent. And then again, we kind of came up with in RSI, we came up, you know, higher and I said oh last week looks like we were overbought what happened this week we became more overbought so this could also happen in the S&P 500 um, as far as the longer term time frame um, again I don't see much issues here many issues in fact these are highs for the move for the advanced uh, for the percentage of stocks above the 200 day EMA so it looks like we're at 86 here and previous highest reading on this time frame, which is about 11 months back, uh, the highest reading was uh, 84, and previous to that was 78. So actually, this is a very good sign, and we're participating broadly. And the same thing here for uh, bullish percent index. Uh, looks like we're at 83 here, so this is a broad participation as well. Here's IWM, the small caps uh, 2000, Russell, also surge, consolidation, and now a breakout here. So we'll see if this breakout uh, holds or if we fall back down. Um, they were, the small caps are underperforming slightly. They're by no means bearish because these are all-time highs. So I would not even contemplate shorting this right now. We are underperforming slightly. There is a little bit of a divergence here, but um, it's not very big. Um, same thing for advanced decline volume. We're underperforming slightly, and there's a little bit of a divergence. So uh, we'll see where the, we go from here. Um, I wouldn't worry about them terribly, I guess. Uh, but um, see how here for IWM in November, December, the surge was very strong. We became overbought. But here we so far have not done so, so this is uh, telling me that there's a little bit of underperformance and a little bit of a momentum divergence. Uh, you can see here we had, <clears throat> um, you know, RSI was higher, so momentum was higher, but now momentum is lower. But, you know, I, I, I'm not a big fan of momentum divergences. Uh, as far as breadth is concerned, I think we're in decent shape still. And here's uh, for the major sec uh, sectors, the New York Stock Exchange Composite, um, probably the broadest index for the stock, United States stock market. Um, these are all-time highs on Thursday, so very bullish chart, obviously. Uh, percentage of, you know, new highs outnumber new lows by a long margin. Um, and again, advanced decline line and advanced decline volume line are hitting all-time highs. So all of this is pointing to a very, you know, painting a very bullish picture, uh, especially the longer term one. So if we do get a pullback, um, I would, uh, you know, personally be looking to enter on the long side again or add to my positions. And my subscribers uh, at mastershastrain.com, of course, are uh, also long many of the funds that I mentioned. All right, then let's look at some of the sector funds. Here's XLK, uh, technology ETF, very similar to QQQ itself. Very strong move. Look at this. Um, we got, what is it? Uh, 11 days in a row, just hollow candlesticks. So if you are trying to short it, this is, you know, obviously a short squeeze and people trying to short it and getting squeezed out and I, I actually if you listen to my previous previous videos I specifically said that I would not short QQQ anytime soon because we don't know where we don't know where the top is it just keeps going sometimes so XLK very similar to QQQ and you know because the composition is quite similar 
But the important thing is we have confirmation of the advanced decline lines from the advanced decline lines. So this is a broad advance again. XLF financials, um, you know, uh, bonds were dropping a little bit last week, and uh, by, banks make money by lending money at a uh, higher rate and borrowing at lower rates. So if the longer term interest are going up, then um, they have more profit margin. So it makes sense for um, banks to be going up. Also confirmation from the advanced decline line, so I don't see any major divergences here either. Um, this is uh, cyclicals, consumer discretionary. Uh, very good move as well. Again, all-time highs. Um, this one is slightly underperforming as far as the advanced decline volume, but we're not that far off. Um, plus, this could be like a fluke. Um, because this is also a very top-heavy fund. So, um, industrials, very strong move as well. Um, confirmation by the advanced decline lines. Now we're getting to a little bit more of a uh, defensive sectors. And I mentioned several times that in my previous videos that stocks have enormous correlations to one another. So, you know, when healthcare was underperforming, that does not mean that they're bearish. Um, in this case, this underperformance just translated into a buying opportunity, basically. Um, so now it looks like healthcare is catching up to the general market. Notice here the advanced decline line is already at all-time highs. So this is a bullish divergence, and we're not close to all-time highs yet. Uh, staples here, I kept saying the same thing in October and November, if you um, listen to my videos and, and December and uh, beginning of January, that uh, this underperformance is temporary and most likely is due to the fact that money is rotating into offensive sectors and this is a defensive sector. That does not mean that defensive sector is bearish, it just means it's underperforming. Um, now we're uh, all-time highs on advanced decline lines, and we have very strong surge just recently. Now the defensive sector, real estate investment trusts. Here's REITs, IYR. Same same story, basically. We're underperforming, but we're not bearish. These are stocks. These are not bonds. And these are utility stocks, again. So the same thing as the um, other def defensive sectors, we are underperforming, but we are by no means bearish. In fact, you can see that this is a all-time high in the advanced decline line, and just this Friday we hit all-time high in the advanced decline volume line, and we're now we're nowhere near um, uh, all-time highs. Uh, in fact, I have to go back uh, like eight months to see the. Previous, so the all time highs were back here in July, and we are already. This is a bullish divergence where we we're hitting all time highs and advanced decline lines, but we have not yet gotten there in price. So, to me, this is a bullish divergence. And I think going forward, um, if we take a pause and, for example, we shift more defensively, then utilities could uh, outperform at the very least in the short term. Right, shifting gears, this is junk bonds, GNK, uh, all-time highs. This is a total return, in other words, it includes the dividends. Uh, these are all-time highs here, very good uh, sign for the general market. Stock market, uh, correlation of junk bonds to stock market is very high. So we are seeing confirmation, multiple confirmation of a bull market in stocks, uh, breadth, uh, all-time highs, and also now from junk bonds. Well, junk bonds were, you know, performing in line basically. So, uh, multiple confirmation of a stock market, uh, you know, bull market in stocks. Um, this is a longer-term time frame for the junk bonds and the weekly time frame. You can see the correlation between junk bonds and stock market is very high. Occasionally, we get negative correlation, but by and large, it's very positive. So. We're seeing um, good good signs for the stock markets, basically, and um, you know, of course, we're a bit overextended, so we could maybe correct some 
uh, sideways or possibly even down. But I think again it will be a buying opportunity. All right, uh, let's go on to the more investment grade bonds. And this is LQD, the corporate investment grade ETF. This is total return again with dividends added back into the price. So on a daily time frame, what I wanted to point out on this chart is, uh, you know, back in January here, I pointed out this multiple hammer-like candlesticks in this 116 and a half area, and looks like it created a support level basically. Now we had a surge here in February, you know, to previous highs here, and so far we were rejected there, but we came down exactly to that same area, and look at this hammer-like candlestick again and then a, a surge off of it. So it appears that we're kind of hitting this zone of support on repeated basis and we're not going much lower. So, um, you know, mo most likely we'll see a, a breakout above 118 and in the very least we're going to see a, uh, this gap filled. Now, uh, this is LQD, this is a longer term time frame, the weekly time frame. So basically, we came down, I can still make an argument this is a bullish chart, because this is a surge, all-time highs, and we came down, we came down to the breakout level. This is a breakout right there, above previous resistance, so we came down to that area, and now we surge off of it. And now, in this 116 area, and a half area, it looks like we have multiple... Um, you know, investors are coming in and buying, 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 buying here. So, you know, for LQD, this looks like a good sign, and you know, it's possible that we will, at the very least, uh, at least attempt to fill this gap up here. Uh, where it will go from there is anybody's guess. You know, if they do decide to raise interest rates, um, then um, bonds may come under further pressure. And here's TLT, kind of similar chart, but a little bit more volatile. Um, it's not as obvious as in the previous chart. You don't see as many hammer-like candlesticks here. But there appears to be a support forming here now at about 118. Definitely there is now support at, this low, at the lows here. Um, so again, we have an unfilled gap, and we could easily come up and at the very least fill that gap. Um, and the longer term time frame, I have a harder time making a bullish argument about TLT because these are all time highs, but these are 52 week lows. So I have a harder time uh, justifying uh, this being a bullish security. In fact, I have hard time justifying it being bullish or bearish. So I have honestly no idea. So for now, I'm basically staying away from trading it, and I am, you know, admitting that I don't know where it will go. Um, my guess is it might come up and fill this gap. But then again, this gap is very close to the 200 day. And also, you know, if we're going to make an argument that this is a bearish security, then um, the shorts will come in here. Uh, if we say that this is a bullish security, we may actually continue higher. Anybody's guess. Okay, uh, let's move on to the Forex universe. And this is US dollar index on the daily time frame. Um, so these are multi-year highs and multi-year highs in my book are bullish so I would be I'm treating this as a bullish chart and I'm, this this pullback is basically a pullback within a bigger uptrend. Looks like we bounced exactly at the previous support around 99.25 you know, we pierced it momentarily, intraday, and then rallied. In fact, this is a, a very strong rally here. We had um, nine straight up days in a row. And finally had a little bit now of selling here. So the selling was so far rather muted. Um, basically, we'll see where we go from here. But in the weekly time frame, the trend is clearly up. These are multi-year highs. This is a double, you know, kind of sideways consolidation with a double bottom and a breakout now. Depth of this pattern, which is, you can think of it maybe like a cup and handle or big cup or something. 
or maybe this is a cup and now this is a handle being formed uh, but anyway the depth of this pattern is nine percent and we haven't gotten the target upside target yet and this is a minimum upside target we could actually go higher so you know we had a breakout now a pullback and this is a weekly free time frame quite a bit of quite a big a bit of selling but then it appears that we have stopped falling and now we're attempting to go higher so what does it mean for the major components uh, of course euro is a major component of the us dollar index so on the weekly time frame this is a weekly time frame in my opinion this is a clearly a, bull, a bearish chart multi-year lows here but then we had several um, hammer-like candlesticks with investors buying down here and then a rally um, this rally came up slightly short of where i expected it to go i expected it to go to this level to the spike right there but it came up relatively close to it and then it seems that we're we're failing um if you know but then again you know we had this hammer like candlestick on the weekly time frame so maybe we're not yet done um you know rebounding because it's kind of like uh you know you can see a big plunge rebound plunge rebound plunge now we need another rebound and so far this rebound is rather shallow so i think at the very least we may may want to touch this area here it was at 108.75 and i haven't seen that yet uh, British pound uh, didn't really go anywhere. The only thing I can say about this chart is that we had an inside week, week. So this entire week's period is within the previous week's period uh, range, rather. So this could be thought of a triangle consolidation. We will try and you know triangle consolidate and then either break down on the or maybe break out. Um, generally speaking, again, this is a bearish chart. US dollar versus Japanese yen, uh, we bottomed out here and then surged. Um, if you listen to my previous videos from uh, this period here, uh, I continuously pointed out that we were unable to pierce this uh, $100 level, which is kind of traded around it. Finally, we surged off of it and came up to this area of previous uh, trading. And we stopped there and now we pulled back. So this pullback to me, uh, this pullback from um, beginning of this year basically is still kind of like a consolidation or a pullback within a bigger uptrend. I think that in this case the US dollar is winning the battle. So I think eventually we will stop falling and uh, in, in this case Japanese yen will continue uh, falling but the US dollar will gain. So in other words this chart will get higher, will go higher. And finally, here is US dollar versus Canadian dollar. Um, so I see two levels of support here at the very least. Uh, one is we are basically there. Um, this is the level we're basically at, at support. And then from here we will rally. In other words, US dollar again will be winning this battle. Uh, another option or possibility, of course, is this level, 1276 here. And it's possible we will uh, kind of drop to that level and then rally. Um, it's, again, it's difficult to say what will happen, but um, I don't think this is a bearish chart. I think this is a bullish chart, and I think US dollar uh, will gain a versus Canadian dollar uh, going forward again. All right, uh, and let's move on to gold since we covered the dollar golden dollar moving opposite directions usually but sometimes they don't so here's one of those examples right now is one of those periods when the dollar and gold are moving um, in the same direction and they're both moving more or less up and this is gold uh, versus us dollar um, correlation coefficient and right now we have slightly positive uh, over the past this is a 20 period um, correlation coefficient so you can see that this is a US dollar index, we're moving higher here, and also gold is moving higher. So this is somewhat unusual. Uh, most of the time it is opposite, gold and dollar are moving opposite direction. So uh, back to the chart of gold itself, uh, we bottomed out here and rallied. 
lots of technical damage to this chart so there's lots of technical resistance levels now so we have this breakdown right there this big red candlestick so that's first level we did overcome this level so that's a good sign for gold bulls here's another breakdown right there uh, in november below um, previous uh, previous lows and so far we have not overcome that level we're tapping out the 1246 here and this is about the same so basically we're kind of knocking on this level right there and we're not able yet to penetrate it um, in the bullish manner here's the same chart but in the weekly time frame here's that same um, reversal from the you know december lows and this is exactly uh, like it looks like a v v-shaped uh, letter v-shaped reversal v-shaped reversals are not that common um, usually there is like a lot of back and forth maybe like a w reversal kind of thing so maybe uh, but they're not unusual you know they're not um, unheard of so in other words it's possible that we do have a v reversal we will just continue higher and break to 52 highs absolutely anything is possible in the markets but what I do see here is that we did pierce that previous levels uh, that I just mentioned, and now we're knocking like around 12.43, 12.46, and we're not yet able to penetrate it upwards. And there is a lot of, there's a lot, it feels like there's a lot of resistance up here still. So, uh, you know, if we do manage to pierce it, um, up here is kind of like the, f the last level of resistance to watch before 52 week highs. Uh, and that is at 11.38. I think if we get above, you know, around this level, we can contemplate that uh, we will see fresh 52-week highs. Right now, um, you know, we can still easily roll over here um, and completely unravel. Here's GDX, Gold Miners ETF, uh, also a daily time frame. So this one, I am I have more concerns about GDX because, of course, it moved. This is about thirty percent move. So um, you know, it's a it's a much more volatile security. But here we have an obvious resistance level at twenty five eighty six, um, and we are basically there. So I like last week I mentioned that where would they hide? You know, where would the short stops be hidden? short stops will be hidden here but additionally up here uh, the shorts might be wanting to just short it up here um, next level of course is to short is like around 28 uh, 60 or so uh, we have more information about gold miners than about gold and here is the advanced decline lines advanced decline volume lines you can see that they have been dropping somewhat uh, one of my proprietary indicators, uh, percentage of stocks on the buy signal, we topped out here at around, uh, what is it, like 85 or so. We didn't pierce this upper blue line, um, which, would, which, which would have been a bullish trigger. We did get a bearish trigger back here in August, but so far we were not able to penetrate, uh, you know, above this like 85 line and we tried on multiple occasions here and we just couldn't get up there so now it looks like we actually got you know significantly worse readings um, and we're now at 25 percent so only 25 percent of the stocks are on the buy signal and this is a proprietary signal um, so you know this is of concern um, and you know this is a this is another piece of a puzzle that uh, like the bears would look at uh, the bulls would say oh but look bullish percent index has improved significantly from like basically zero here to 60 percent so that's definitely a positive sign so right now gdx is kind of like finely poised and it could break either way um we could see further price appreciation to possibly this levels um, but I, I, you know, I, on, on the opposite hand, we could see the bears really come in here, especially if we see, um, you know, prices come up above this levels here. Maybe the bears really will come in here and, you know, attempt to push the prices lower. 
Uh, it will strongly depend on the dollar, of course. And here's the same chart. I wanted to point out here the levels. Here's 2586, pretty obvious uh, resistance, and we're basically there. Um, and then there's that same 2848 level, basically. All right, then let's move on to the hard commodities. Here's oil on a daily time frame. Nothing is happening. Look at this trading range. Basically, it started like back here, maybe like uh, around December. And the lows and the highs are defined by 55.24 here and maybe like 49.60, I'm guessing. So it's just basically a big trading range and just moving sideways. So nothing to write home about, really. The only thing I can, you know, I saw some similarities to previous chart patterns, and here's a price pattern that happened in 2015. So from here to here, we had about 10 weeks, 10, 10 weeks worth of consolidation. So like, you know, 10 weeks here, or maybe even 11 weeks, uh, if you count the first one. And then same thing here, we have 10 periods or 11 periods, even where you count. So we're basically kind of getting to this resolution stage where we need to see either the bulls or the bears succeed. Um, the bulls can succeed, absolutely. Um, maybe they can, you know, something really terrible happens and I don't know, some kind of a supply disruption, major supply disruption in oil. It's possible and we'll see prices higher. Alternatively, we could see uh, lots of new rigs come online um, and the United States will just pump more oil from the United States reserves or OPEC will decide that they can not sustain their you know production cuts. So that's also a possibility. But in any case, this is a very tight consolidation range and it will eventually resolve one way or the other. Here's energy ETF XLE. Um, this one did hit 52 week highs and corrected uh, downwards. Uh, we basically came up to breakout level. So if we say that this is a breakout right there in uh, November, uh, and then we had a breakout, 52 week highs, and we basically came down to this level. And we had a big hammer candlesticks here, candlestick here with a surge next day. So this looks to be a confirmed hammer candlestick. Um, however, on this chart, what worries me is this advanced decline line, which has not really confirmed um, this 52 week highs. So it seems that it's really, you know, this ETF is not firing firing on all cylinders. Um, divergences have a notorious uh, manner of not working out, so it is also possible that we will hold support here and move higher. Um, stocks have high correlation to one another, so I think if the stock market continues higher, energy will follow. But it does have a lot of, you know, some dependence on oil, obviously, because there are oil producers in this ETF. So uh, it's possible that if oil decides to take a dive, which is also possible, um, energy may actually follow suit. This is natural gas on a daily time frame. Um, last week, I think it was around, uh, let me see, where was it, like right there. I said that we're possibly done correcting. Well, clearly I was wrong because look at this week's um, candles, which is continued lower. But, you know, if you do decide to trade natural gas, uh, which I highly discourage the uh, beginning traders from doing, uh, it is a very um, volatile ETF uh, or the volatile um, security that gaps consistently. Look at this gap right there. This is an 8% gap, uh, another gap, two and a half, and we had this big gap, um, you know, 3% gap. So this thing is more volatile and more wild. So um, I would discourage new traders from trading that honestly. So anyway, so we are not yet done correcting. Uh, I don't know where uh, this correction will finally stop. 
but this is a breakout level at two dollars fifty five cents so I would be watching that level if we see you know a close below this level then we may need to reconsider this uh, bullish posture entirely uh, here's the weekly time frame uh, here's that same level two dollars fifty cents here I think that if we do get there we could um, you know, if we break below it significantly, then we may need to completely reconsider the bullish posture. For now, I'm still treating this as a bullish chart in the long term, and I'm looking for uh, buying opportunities still. All right, um, if you like what you're hearing, please uh, like this video. If you have any comments, please do share, please do comment. Uh, if you, uh, it would mean really a lot to me if you do share this video and this uh, post with others. Uh, thanks for watching and please stay tuned on how to find us on the internet. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. So I wanted to show you how to find us on the internet. Please go to masterchesstrading.com. We do have a trade alert services which are live right now. Uh, so please consider signing up for um, the service. It's only $24.95 per month. Also, if you sign up for our mailing list, you get a discounted uh, membership. Um, you get to see uh, what I'm buying and selling and which funds I'm looking at uh, potential uh, buy, sells, etc. There's quite a bit of uh, members-only content once you log in. There is um, uh, a lot of information about risk control, which is actually extremely important uh, for traders because the preservation of capital is really uh, one of the paramount um, to the uh, successes trading in trading there's quite a bit of psychology of videos uh, psychology of trading videos in the members only section as well um, also i'm uh, going to be starting a dividend aristocrats um, service uh, for now it's free for the members that are logged in uh, that are already paying members so uh, that's another benefit to signing up soon uh, the blog section shows uh, the previous uh, posts and market videos, of course. Um, also, I added a new section here, which is FAQs, and I do get quite a bit of questions about various, um, you know, ideas uh, and questions about the market. So, if you do have a question, please don't hesitate to send it in. Um, you know, send it uh, here, and uh, I'll be uh, able. Hopefully, I'll be able to answer it for you. All right. Um, Thanks for watching and please consider signing up for the trailer services. Bye-bye.